God. Hey, the radio, the crew is far from slow. The light's no longer yellow. Ready, steady, go. Crank it up. Crowds all on their feet, not one bothered by the heat. Imagine them in the driver's seat. Treasure flag would be swing it up. Oh, it's crazy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here live at Bristol Motor Speedway under the night lights. The Bristol night race coming to us real soon. But for now, the Venom Truck Series have a little special race of their own with the None of Your Beeswax 200 here at Bristol Motor Speedway, the Trucks Division. Hi, everyone. I am the Crusader Christian Driver. Join you guys here today here as the Venom Truck Series coming to you live here in Bristol, Tennessee. A laundry list and a hard lineup of drivers ready to go at it for 200 laps to the distance. Set to go for our action pack race event. So without further ado, we start them up with our drivers from on the pole. In the big 09, it is going to be Kevin Sargent. It is outside the 53 will be Mr. Kyle Zittle. In row number two, then it'll be Brantley Ganey. And the 22 is outside in the big 49 will be Mr. Paul Sargent. In row number three, Michael Dean will be in the 73 is outside the big eight. That is going to be Michael Dean. And is outside Cole Maxwell is in the eight. In the next row, Andy Palicki will be in the 32 with the six is outside Max M. Buell. The 55 will then be Paul Ellison with the 15 then being Ryan Dye. And the next row we'll see Eric Breen in that big 26 is outside will be the 99. That is Will Salamone. And it looks like already I think our uh, sit our lineup might have got mixed up because I'm not seeing the proper drivers in their order. So I'm going to just have to apologize up front about that one. So. And they took the screenshot of the uh, lineup here for me. I don't think they took the right one. So I'm just going to go with the numbers here and the names here. Apologies in advance. Michael Crawl will be in the 11th. The 50th, Corey Rutherford. In the 21, Jeff Langston. In the, uh, the 18, then will be Kyle Dumick. The 17, that's Nathan Reynolds. The 12 is Jeremy McKinnon. The 2 is John Kay. And the 5 will be John Van Leer. The 76 is Pascal Samar. The 13 is then Brandon Beers. Final starters, Bobby Anderson, the one. D05 is Chad Stearns. And the 36, Kyle Spees. All right, race fans, we're ready to get to it here and set it on down. Off the pace, set for the lineup, and ready to go. Race and race fans, it's time to set them off down to the distance. It will be Reynolds in the 17 having the early start and command off of turn number four. The last great Coliseum host for 200 laps. Here we go. High above the foreground here, you can see right down to the track side here. We'll get him going out of the gate. The 36 is Bees, the Speed Demon. Looking to already make some moves down on the bottom lanes. They charge him off to the first set of corners. Back up to the front here. Oh, whoa, whoa. Trouble down there. Trouble. Looks like th that might have been the 36. Old Spees having some problems down there. Couldn't quite keep it under wraps. We'll have to swing it back under the track here and see if he can figure it out from here. But that was a big mistake. He just cost himself. Going to have to really watch it here late into the run. Reynolds with the early advantage here out of the gate. Continues to hold the lead off. Ryan Dye in the 15 right now trying to get back up to the pace, back up to the track here with these guys. Looking to stabilize down and hang on. Going to need a little bit of work here and a little bit of help. I will not lie as well, folks. My camera system may not be uh, smooth as here today, unfortunately. We can't quite show you the entire track at times, unfortunately, because uh, my camera system is a little bit buggy, and it looks like, speaking of buggy, 
Oshkosh flag is out here, so I'll we'll have to kind of settle them off down in the distance here and see what exactly transpired here that got us that caution flag to begin with. Kind of hard to tell, unfortunately, but I believe it may be due to some driver error here, and it looks like it's going to be the Dean of Drivers, Michael Dean, that uh, brings out the old caution. Came off right out of turn number two there, and unfortunately it looked like 73 just kind of lost it in the grip. Tried to get down to the apron there onto the bottom, and there was no place to go. So a tough break for the Dina drivers out of the gate. We'll have to see if we can come back and fire it off a little bit better from here. It's got a, quite a bit of a showing in the tell here to go, so we'll see if these guys can get this one downed in. The none of your beeswax 200, though, will continue on as we now line the drivers back up into position. I'm going to try my best to keep it on the one camera here. But it's going to be a little bit difficult. So as we get back to it here, green flag back on out. Firing off down to the position. And don't worry, folks. Hopefully by Sunday night, we should be finally back to normal. Currently just need to get back to the headquarters. Unfortunately, that's still uh, kind of submerged in some things. So we're currently working on getting around that. Good news, though, is that we're still at least able to broadcast, get this on going, thanks to the producer's help. And they're very, great, very grateful for them giving us a hand here. It's swinging back down to the run, though. You can see a lot of drivers early on kind of sticking to the old Bristol format, stick to the bottom and drive it there. Some take into the outside line, though. Some kind of get into the middle. There are multiple lines you can hit here at Bristol, it's depending on how much tire wear and how much turf you've used up. This track normally known for running strictly the bottom lane until that little repave of theirs, which then sent the cars more up to the top side. But here in iRacing, it's a bit of a different story. Your mainly use is going to be trying to work every single part of the truck in, and as soon as the tires start to give, then you start working your way towards top side, towards the outside lane, to then gain the most speed, the maximum amount of potential in your truck. But as you're seeing right now, too, some of them maybe not quite understanding that rule and concept as Plicky gets a little bit too hard on the throttle. You go from a high banked end to then that straight, that's that pretty much progressed in straightaway that's a little bit more flattered off on a quarter, on a literally a half mile like this. It is no easy task. It is one of the toughest tracks to master, to perfect, and even get better at. That's why a lot of folks have constantly been always using the bump and run mentality as a caution has brewed again. Trying to get a look, see what happened there. As you see the lights on, unfortunately our camera is not quite getting the yellow flag out. The flagman is waving though. See if we can get a good look and see who caused that one to come out. And it looked like it's going to be on the six of Max Embuel. In this case, so let's take a look at the replay here and see what happened to him. Came off down around turn number three and four, and you see he got a little love tap. I believe that was a 0-9 of Kevin Sargent. Caught him off guard there a little bit, and the 11 Michael Crawl got into it, and the old Captain Crunch, number six, he's got some damage. He's going to need a buff out. That certainly will not do him many favors, though, at least for now. He's going to have a long road ahead of him to get back into this one. Tough break there for the six of Maxim Buell. He looked like he qualified at least somewhat decently in the top in the top 15. Looking to get some, looking to make some, looking to make a name for himself here on the Venom Truck Series in this race here with a none of your beeswax 200. But unfortunately, as they say, you can't win them all. We'll see if he can bring it back here as they bring it back to the green flag. The 17 and 8, the Reynolds will have the lead. Jeremy McKinnon, the number 12 right now, currently the second place man in last week, finally ended a curse there on his end. But unfortunately, speaking of curse, it looks like Brantley Ganey's curse. Can't seem to go away either. He gets a little love tap there from the 21. That was Jeff Langston. Langston gave him a little nudge in the back there, got him a little bit loose, and then sent him off into the cliffside, nearly out of control. Manages to revive himself, and he's okay, but lost a lot of ground time. These guys are running back, trying to catch there to Diane McKinnon. 
Meanwhile, moving through the field here, we got a little bit of work around here. The 99 of Will Salmoni making a bit of a comeback here. The kitchen rail on the rail. 99 up the 53 of Kyle Zeller right behind him looking for possession. Contention at bay with a quick trip, 53. I was just gonna say earlier, McKinnon, you know, knocking off a elongated curse that he's had here on Pete Terry's TV this entire season, been windless, and to finally knock off that, knock that off his resume, he's constantly been telling me today, I am focused, I am prepared, and I'm just ready to get back at these guys and give her all she's got. I've never felt any better, and I sure as heck don't feel any worse. I want to get back to the top of the mountain, but I can only do it by winning. That one race, he said, meant a lot, and he knows it too. 200 lap race to the distance here at Bristol Motor Speedway. This is certainly no easy challenge. Again, the task here at hand is always going to be perfecting the craft control of the truck. Speeds here constantly ramping over 100 miles per hour and constantly forcing these guys to absolutely take into consideration how each turn handles, how each momentum boost goes, and then making sure to watch out for overthrottle in it. It's smooth through the entry, hard on the exits, but you gotta be careful not to get too hard until you get to that straightaway because again, that banking can be a bit of a rough shot. It can swing you back a little bit and it's very tough to get around once you're stuck in it. On board here with the 99. We're on board with the Will Salamone. And you can see just kind of how that overall impression, that overall arc and story is going to be towards him in the easy go. Number two, John K. John K. remember, also a winner on the circuit. John Van Leer, one of the only guys right now that is still winless, in my opinion. Has come very close and really deserves a little bit more love than he does. He's been trying to get the insert coin, rail up cars. Number five, Atari Chevrolet Silverado machine in towards victory lane, but he has not been able as late like, to perfect it. Today be a different story. Can the five finally figure it out? Also, if you have been looking on our uh, website here today on Pizza Reese and TV, Facebook, and Instagram and Twitter, you would know as well, later tonight we have, of course, a little revival race as the final race, if you will, of the Pit Stall Summer Series comes to you at Phoenix International Raceway, or Phoenix Raceway as most know it. It should be an interesting race today as we'll see those trucks as well go at it. And one last final climactic sequence in battle. We cannot wait to see it. We cannot wait to show you guys all the action coming to you today. And we wish nothing but the best to every driver out there as we get ready for that. But right now, anyway, we are still watching on as multiple drivers are contenders up towards the front. Battle from the back. Kyle Zill now with company behind him. Here comes the number one. That is Bobby Anderson in the Joker Mobile as he brings the Bob as he brings that W old machine right into the field. Sparks starting to fly though. Drivers getting very hot headed up to the top side. They're trying to get into the middle ground where the speed is. The tires start to wear in. They need to find a little bit of control and a little bit of rubber on these slick tires. And they need all the help they can get. This is of course not an asphalt, but a concrete kind of section of racing. And it's one of the most unique layouts that everybody faces up against when it comes to any of the racing seasons. Kyle Speeds, look at this, the 36 here in the Speed Demon, making a little bit of a comeback here as the sports and stuff. 36 Toyota Tundra looks to try to gain back on these guys, get Bane back on the Speeds. We've seen Speeds here before. He knows how to put on a fight and put on a bit of a show. But this is the lineup again. You have guys that are just absolutely contentious and contenders in the laundry list of heavy racing attributes and heavy racing duty machines. These guys have no quit and no give, and they know it. Fire down around the corners, though. You see the 53 here of Zillow losing ground and pace, and now it's time for the one of Bobby Anderson to start making the run here as they come dead heap right off of turn number two. Great side-by-side -side battles between both guys here. Speed's making a run there on the bottom of Jan Van Leer. Jan trying to keep speed topside, but the bottom is where most run comes from. Speed's, you can see.
see he is pushing some limits, pushing some momentum here, just trying to hang on and keep it up for grabs as we go on board with him. Nice matching him up on the track here right now. The 99 Will Samoli now also making a bit of a ride off, but here comes Corey Rutherford, the big 50 machine, now making a jump towards the front. Corey Rutherford again, the big 50, kind of taking that old pace car of ours and uh, deciding to put some duct tape on it and then call it a 50 car. I have absolutely no idea where that mad lad got that truck from. I swear that I did not give him the keys or give him anything with gas in there to uh, run. I swear on my grave. Speaking of on a grave or two, that 09 mil yellow Ford F-150 rising from the grave, coming back after that little mix-up there with the number six. Looks like he's got learned his lesson from earlier, not in using the bump and run too quickly or too much. As he pushes himself right up to the front there, turns three wide. Slammed into the wall off of turn three, now back through turn four. Trouble behind him though. Major trouble behind and we got one around. Trying to get a number on that one here. We know it we saw it go spinning around here, but I am not getting a number. We'll have to go to the PT Minster replay, take a look at that one. Bit of a wild little ride there that one of these guys had took on, but not quite sure who it was. Trying to visit the PT Minster replay and see about that, because that was a bit of a drive off there, to say the least. That might have been, no, nah, it wasn't the six. I'm not really sure who it was that number on that one, guys. Preach. It might have been Cole Maxwell. Yep, it was Cole Maxwell there. We finally got the number on that one. All right, let's get that PT Maurice TV up. There we go. Here's the instant replay. Sorry for the delay again, guys. Again, this is still systems we're not really used to working with. Looks like Paul Ellison had the old 55 and the Coles Custom 8 Goat machine goes for a little ride there. And unfortunately, as they all say, that doesn't win you anything here. May give him a bit of an attitude adjustment for later, but I don't think that's what he had in mind. So that little bump and run by Paul Ellison will bring us to our third caution, I believe, of the day. So the field now will reset. We'll get everybody put back into their spots in the, in the order that they were when they came out of pit road. And it looks like McKinnon is going to uh, take over position here. So this should be an interesting little spot here. Paul Ellison will take over the second spot. So without further ado, it's time to get drivers back up, strap them down, tighten the belts up and fire off again. McKinnon is your leader as we bring it back to the green. The Akuma. Yep. Oh, trouble! Off turn number four, two there. We got problems again. Nate the Reynolds slams hard and a pile up in three. Well, I was just about to say there that it looked like the Akuma 12 of McKinnon was getting a good jump there to good drive off, but uh, then things took a d nose turn for the worst, and this is what happened. My word, this was a big wreck here. Take a look at that from the top cam here. This is Paul Sargent's drone cam we had kind of flinging around around there. Take a look at this. Watch up on the left side of your screen here. Bit of a wreck off here. This is where the pileup came. And see if Michael Dean gets in there. Jan Van Leer, Eric Breeding. Looks like the 09 as well. If Kevin Sargent gets into that little mix up there. And this is what brought the caution out to begin with, which was the number 17 of Nathan Reynolds here. Nathan Reynolds, unfortunately, getting caught off guard and kind of caught into a bad spot here. Drove hard right off out of turn number two and just kind of ramped it up right into the 22. And again, with that speed and that 
power, that's what gets you in trouble. And you can see the Dean of Drivers, once he got slipped up in there, there was no going back. What a tough break for everybody involved there. We'll have to see if they come back and find themselves back in a decent spot. They're definitely going to need to iron out some problems down there with the drivers as well as with those trucks. I don't think they're too thrilled right now with how this one is going here in the None of Your Beeswax 200. So back off into the distance, back into the corners here. Race fans will get them settled away. Lap 60 of 200 now commences. And the Buffalo Wild Wings, number 15, Ryan Dye, will have to find his way around the track a little bit because he's got company up on the top side. Andy Pilecki and Kyle Speeds now working together, working it on in alpha turn number four. Bit of a bump draft there from Spees to the 32. Doesn't get him loose, gets him settled more up to the corner as the 12 Akuma and the McKinnon tries to hang to his speed. Doesn't quite catch it though. Ryan Dye down on the bottom lane. Here comes the, got, here comes Ryan making a drive on the bottom lane, looking for speeds, looking for power. Trying not to let the truck slip up too much, but again, the more you turn the truck in, the worse your tire wear becomes. But in this case, it doesn't really bother him too much. Dye will regain the lead for the for the first time now. And Kyle Speeds joins him in this case. First time today, I believe Ryan Dye has taken the lead here, and he is a championship contender without a doubt. He's been so close this season being in second then finally getting that monkey off his back getting that win then have to literally get everything rearranged and flipped on its head to the races like this and Myrtle Beach too one that he told me earlier still haunts him he says he did not want another short track to go down like that he will make or break this race if he absolutely has to well he certainly is holding nothing back on that front and on that end but he still has a little bit of work to do. He wants to get completely cleared out and taken in this. main pace here, Max Van Buell right now currently falling way many laps back after his little incidents and issues. Eric Greening right behind him there. Michael Crawl in the 11 sticking with the speeds as well. Speaking of speeds here, Kyle Speeds, the speed demon has taken the lead now. So the 36 is your new leader as Ryan Dye looks to try to catch up there with him. Guy's not going to give up that easily though, I can tell you that much. He'll give it what he can, give her it what it's worth, but he still has some time to go and some time to be pushed into position. Andy Palicki here in the big 3-2 as well. Can you try to keep distance and maintain speeds? He looks the battle behind him. Onboard camera here. Palicki just saw that battle between Bobby Anderson and the number one, and I believe that is the 50 of Corey Rutherford. Both guys doing a great job here, kind of keeping speed, keeping up the pace. But again, they're not even halfway through this. You've seen a lot of tore up equipment. You know, the old saying is you have a great day if you came out of Martinsville with no damage and you managed to finish the race. Well, here at Bristol, I think we might have to add that to the calendar there because Bristol, it's not a track that you can exactly expect to not have some damage on. And it's not a track you can expect to not have a little bit of some uh Hearts broken, some maybe even a few uh, mishaps be thrown your way. I've seen a lot of guys get, and gals even too, kind of let their tempers get the better of them, and that would end up making the racing fueled up just a little bit more as you get further into the event. 
Bob Anderson racing WG.GG, Toyota Tundra, Bobby, Bobby Anderson, the one now throwing it right back at the kitchen rail, 99, Will Salamone, top side with damage on the front, can't hold him off, goes into position. It's Salamone too. Right now, has had a bit of a bad luck season, a bit of a bad break end on his part. He's been kind of struggling and forced to struggle more as he goes with how he's handled himself on and off the track, and he's been trying to figure out how to change that and how to get better at that. I talked to him earlier. He said point blank, well, the main thing is just i got to stop catching myself in these spots where I don't want to be in. I need to find a way to strategize above all else. As you go on board here, we'll just look at the banking on this track and how tough it is just to master around Bristol. You would think this is literally like a super speedway slash intermediate track setup for how high that banking is. Problem is you're running on a half mile, guys. This thing is an absolute monarchy and a maddening track to have to figure out with that kind of kind of kind of speed, that kind of runoff. And speaking of runoff here, the 18 and Kyle Dumick here, unfortunately. Not having a pleasant day, I would say. Going to now deal with the number one here of Anderson as the six of Max M. Buell stays out of his way as well. And Buell just not getting in the way of Brig as well. He'll go lap down if you're not careful here. Pacing and position starting to further intensify. Every driver looking for that last little leg up, that last bit of extra speed, trying to hang in there. Do make down a lap at the moment here with the homer 21 of Jeff Langston coming right through him here. And a bit of a cluttered zone situation. The 21 Rotellet machine makes its way around and gets nice and compact here. Corners off beautifully on the AT and Do make the Rowdy Energy Tundra is struggling here. Six here getting slinged around. Eric Greening as well. Jeff Langston. You can just see these guys have more speed, more momentum. They are on pace and on charge. They're the ones to watch out for because they know how to work this track, how to work this field, and how to continue to keep going with it. Kyle Speeds in the 36. Still your race leader. Ryan Dye behind him by about a by about under a second, about nine tenths of a second completely. You can see the distance between those two right here. Not as far off as you may think. Matter of fact, actually a little bit closer than you believe. Even Dye knows too that this is still a golden opportunity and golden chance here. To make a bit of a run, make a bit of a comeback if he can. He needs to get that Buffalo Wild Wings machine a little bit further on the gas though, in my opinion. And a little bit harder on the power, although you see the RPMs disagreeing with me there. We're on board here with the 15. fight his way through lap traffic the 12 of the kuma machine jeremy mckinnon he will not give that lap up that easily speeds knows as he's trying to get around and that's one of the problems you run on short tracks is who will give you the line who will give you a chance and who just wants to make things even more difficult for you speeds currently finding that out the hard way die now with a great comeback as you see the 32 of andy flicky just whirling himself right into it hot on the distance and hot in control. Some great moves here. Look at the 32, the Flicky right to the bottom. On the cage here, rattling the door of the 15 die, trying to hang on. 
So look, he's still supporting the 911 colors on the side of his truck here. Beautiful representation there. But currently, he's got a neon Toyota in front of him with a big gold belt of Buffalo. Wild Wings 15 on the top side, riding out to the distance. Die has got the lead. And what a complete turnaround there. Kyle Spees, he had the speed built up, momentum carried, but then he ran into a little 12 named Jeremy McKinnon, and that slowed him down tremendously here. Now it is Palicki and Dye's turn to start making the charge. Palicki has not been in victory lane for a little bit of a time. He said he'd love to change that today. This is a great starting point. But to get to Dye now, he's going to have to figure out how to get halfway across the track and halfway across the field because he still has some time left on his hands. And he's very well aware of that. As right at the moment, John Kay goes to war with the 50 of Corey Rutherford. flip-flopping in between just kind of swinging it around the track here Rutherford still dealing with the speed advantage and the power boost here from Gay but John Gay knows if he does not keep speed going he could be a lap down and that's not what he wants to see he knows it too uh, more camera here at John Kay just see everybody literally moving their way up to speeds Beautiful crowd in attendance as well. Look at this, over 100,000 in attendance watching this race. The Venom Truck Series wanted to see a show. They wanted to see the fans come on out. They've got their wish, and, and, and how howdy do they get more than their money's worth? Top five battling out, Salamone and Rutherford with Michael Crawl on the outside there. Lap traffic trying to stay out of the way. And Bobby Anderson and Kyle Spees currently dealing with each other for the first spot. This is a four-truck battle for supremacy. Anderson in the middle. Salamone on the bottom. Spees top. Now top side looking to be the speed for Spees. Towards the outside line, though, with 97 laps to go. Here comes Rutherford. And Rutherford is not making this easy, folks. Will not give him an inch. Won't give anybody an inch. We got four trucks now closely together, side by side, battling it back through the front stretch into the next set of turns. Five truck battle for third. Anderson moving the chains. Rutherford right on the mark. Everybody going for broke here. Anderson kind of toying with him, saying, why are you so serious back there? Well, Rutherford knows why. He's trying to get himself a podium. He hasn't been able to do it all season. Here he comes. And speaking of coming back, watch out for McKinnon. Where the heck did Jeremy McKinnon get himself back into? Oh, a little nudge there to the one of Anderson. He's five laps down, but I don't think he really cares all that much. McKinnon is lap traffic, and he right now is making everybody wait and think and get out of his way about that. No remorse and no give there. That much is for certain. My word. Kyle Speed's the speed demon right now, currently trying to keep his sports. 36 Neon Machine ready up into the front half, but he's currently still struggling to get around traffic. Sports and stuff, 36 here. Currently on the binders. With the two, John K right behind him looking for an opening. And Anderson now stuck on the bottom. Looks like the travel and the run went towards top side. The outside now is starting to play close to the rubber. The rubber is up on the top half. That's where the speed is, and that's where they're going. Oh, oh my word. Look at this onboard camera here with John Kay. You saw the rear end just kick out the slice bit. He just slammed a throttle back into the charge just to make a move. Salamone in the 99, not making it easy for him either. Kind of pumping and boosting him around a little bit. 
Swing it back to the bottom now, and Spees into the wall, losing speed and power. And now it's time for Salamone to make his mark. What a flip-flop here. We literally have switched out the top five guys, I think probably in the last 20 or 30 laps or so, like almost four or five times here. Absolutely crazy madness here as Caution brews out trouble down on the back stretch. The caution is out. We'll take a look at the PT Mr. Replay and see where exactly that transpired at. Well, I'm not receiving word of any caution flag, and I'm not seeing anything on our end for that. No, no caution. There is no caution, folks. There is no caution. Ignore that yellow spark up there. There, it's still 84 laps to go. I am not sure what went wrong there or what happened, but there was no caution flag and there was no flag thrown. Drivers are told to keep going, so we're just going to let them keep rolling. Got a call there, at least. Eight to last remaining right now here. Still through the field here. John Kane, easy go machine. Now making his run towards top side. Gets a good run off there on the 50 of Corey Rutherford. Now Rutherford taking full control of that. Oh, and takes a nice little hit there from the 99. Will Salamone gave him a good little hit there in the back. Take a look at that one real quick here on the PC Mr. Replay. Salamone, bam, right into the corner panel there and got a good little hit off of him. Took him for a bit of a drive, took him for a bit of a run. I don't think uh, the 99 was expecting that all that much, but that is kind of the case that can happen sometimes. Field continues to work their way around the track and onto the speeds here. We're currently trying to figure out what is going on with our little system here. Why is giving us the yellow flag? Rodney Christensen saying, great night for racing. Rodney, thank you for tuning in. Yes, it is. Parking it down around Ryan Dye in the 15, currently dealing with the 22. Being driven by Brantley Ganey here. Ganey trying to keep pace and keep distance. And again, the 15 is your race leader here. No change there. Andy Palicki currently in the second slot. Palicki falling further and further back, but thanks to a little help there from Sergeant and uh, 22 here. Looks like he might have a chance here. Sergeant and Ganey there, those were the two that were ahead. But now our lap traffic to the 32. Andy Palicki now knows he's going to have to figure something out. And rather quickly, he's not in control. Back on the back half here, Corey Rutherford in pit road now having to get some tires built off. 99 Will Salamone been in pit road already and he currently is uh, still dealing with the damage on that front of the nose. Didn't have an instant repair he can use. He's currently just dealing with whatever he's got. Paul Maxwell in the 8. Well, the good news for him is he's on the lead lap so he's still in control. And he's actually right now in the top 5 so Maxwell, despite his little spin around earlier, doesn't seem to be too faced or too messed in the corners here. So it looks like he'll just try to keep his speed and keep his momentum going. 73 laps left to go.
I could crawl in the 11 right now, currently moving back into the pack here. He has had a bit of a tough little season ahead of him. Hasn't really been able to get out of the way or out of the mess sometimes, these guys. And would like to try to keep speed going, try to keep the momentum up and running, but he's definitely going to need to figure things out a little bit later on. Dyer race leader right now, Andy Palicki currently hanging back around the pack here. Everybody else is trying to stick to the speed. Paul Ellison, you see right now, lap traffic, just trying to maneuver his way around. He's hoping for a bit of a break, a bit of a help here, but unfortunately hasn't been able to figure that out yet. A lot of guys that were up in that top half are starting to fall further and further back, and a lot of it's just due to being pit road strategies as well as going from hit or miss strategy and momentum. Five laps remaining again though folks reminder that caution flag out there it's not a actual yellow flag right now it currently is just because of a glitch on our end not really sure what happened to the timing sheets or what happened there but it's kind of popped up on our end Back to the field though, Corey Rutherford the 50. After having to go through pit stall, not to pit momentum here. Looks like he's trying to keep his momentum alive and keep his hopes up as well. Sticking with the rest of the field. Bobby Anderson two laps down as well. So you can see just kind of how quick a pit stop can throw you behind the leaders and behind the packs here rather quickly. That's why you see a lot of guys generally trying to use their time up as well as use their control on the speeds as there's problems down there from Pascal Simard. And the yellow flag this time for sure is out. Pascal is out in from pit road. I believe he had some troubles getting in there. And now he's going to pay the price for it. Brings the caution out. And here's the reason why he came to a dead stop. He missed his pit stall. And did not get in proper working Spot. So that will bring out the pit stop here, and that will hopefully give some of these guys a bit of a chance here. But Ryan Dye actually was in pit road at that time that he was supposed to go in, and I think this might have just cost him big time here. Andy Palicki also had gone in pit road under the caution flag, so now he is going to be thrown in a vicarious situation here, but he is going to be at least on lead lap territory, so we'll see. If that does come to be a factor here as we bring him right back to the green flag. And see if maybe our uh, little timing system finally fixed itself. Oh, well, Maxwell and Andy Plicky will be at it. Here we go. We've got the system working again. 55 laps to go. Andy Plicky is your race leader. Well, wasting no time there through the field here. The rest of your guys coming back from more and coming back off the track here. Jeff Langston way behind position, way behind momentum here, about five and a half seconds off. Cole Maxwell currently the only one that's even close to any Plicky, but Plicky right now is not holding back, and he's not giving an inch here. Oh, wait a minute, though. There's another caution out, another caution out. Where could that have gone? Caution flag brewed out on the track. We're gonna take a look and see if we can find our culprit here. Everybody came to a very slow halt there. I think it might have something to do with Jeremy McKinnon. Well, only one way to find out for sure here is the beat team is the replay. Let's see here came right off of turn number 
four, and looks like Will Salboni gave him an old little bump and run, and that is the old time bump and run. And unfortunately, McKinnon taking a bit of a dive there. Couldn't go anywhere and couldn't get out of anywhere, and he knew it too. Laps continue to fade off here, race fans. We'll see how it all plays out as the field continues to drive down in further and further through the field. Cole Maxwell and Andy Plicky will still be your two front runners as we bring them back to the green flag this time by. Off turn number four, 48 laps left to go. It's time to continue on. Jeff Langston, that Rotella 21 machine moving towards the bottom lane here out of the gate. Maxwell falls back. Paul Ellison trying to get a little bit of recovery done here, but he is still nowhere near that lineup and nor that score as Caution flies out again. Well, my, my, here at Race Fans, yet again, another caution flies out, and we know for sure that is a caution, so take a look at the PTM Instant Replay. It looks like it might be on Kyle Dumig, but I can't say for certain until we know for sure. It looks like it might also be on Max Embuel or Michael Crawl. I think we're just going to have to visit the PTM as a replay for sure and just get a good eye view of this one. We're not totally for sure. We'll let you guys be the judge. Crawl got off to a bad start there. And looking at position. Max off pace. McKinnon is, well, there's our culprit. And after last week's strong showing there, Jeremy McKinnon once again finds himself on the battle axe of trouble. Andy Felicki right now will currently be the man set on the pole again. So once more laps just winding down, the easier it's going to be for him to just kind of start cruising around. Doesn't have to worry about the tires getting too out of, out of hand and out of control here. So... Really just needs to focus on himself and stay focused on his driving. 41 laps remain. Flicky restarts the field. Back to the turns. Here we go. And now the field. Lap, those are laps down. Curly just trying to get their laps back. Those are trying to keep their speed up, trying to hang in there. Pascal Semar in the 76 right now, currently dealing with the 99. That's Salomone right behind him, sneaking his way through corners and through the distance. Cole Maxwell in the 8 currently dealing with a little bit of company there as Ryan Dye. Got put into that troublesome spot earlier thanks to that little caution thrown out when he was in pit road trying to hang on. Uh oh, trouble there for the aid of Maxwell as he gets into the wall protection, gets into it there. Corey Rutherford in the 50 and the 12, Jeremy McKinnon. Kind of weaseled in and kind of nudged off a little bit. And Maxwell currently rubbing and racing around this entire field and currently dealing with everybody that's in their way. That's one thing you got to be very careful about is watching for everybody that comes in through those fields and comes in through those tracks here. Rutherford in the 50, getting a great drive off and a great amount of speed and execution as the 22 of Grand Ligini falls in pursuit. Troublesome spot comes up here on our caution brewing out, it looks like, or no, that might just be a nerd glitch on our end. Yeah, it's nerd glitch on our end, unfortunately. Thankfully, we do know that our race leader is Andy Palicki. He is the leader, so we'll continue to watch out for him here as Bobby Anderson has a little bit of a workaround here on the one with the 15 to die. Ellison as well, kind of crossing it up a bit.
And a reminder, do not ignore that yellow flag there you see on our end. That is not an actual yellow. It's just unfortunately because uh, got a little bit of a glitch there, and that's what ended up causing that yellow to pop out. Else, <laughs> my word, gets really loose there off a turn number four. Ends up almost taking the 76 and Pascal with him in the one of Anderson. Oh, he's going to take him this time, though. That's definitely a caution. Pass. Bobby Anderson and Paul Ellison colliding off in the distance through turn number two to three. And a huge little wreck there, unfortunately, ensuing. As they came off turn number two, it looked like both guys were looking for an opening, looking for a shot in the arm. And instead, what they found was a kick in the groin. Huge hit there, else you see the flags flying out there, yellow flag flies up and oh my word. Everybody getting cr crossed up and twist crossed, applesauced all around this track my friends. This is an absolutely wild race for the none of your beeswax 200 here for the Venom Truck Series. But we are coming closer and closer to the end. This race, one of the final races of the season. Next week, when we come to you live here on PT Race TV, will be the very final race of their season. And we cannot wait to show you all that happens, all that encompasses with it. 25 laps left to go. It's go time. Look, he knew it. He got a good jump off. Langston pursuit. Uh oh, trouble though, trouble. Maxwell slammed around and he's gone for a ride. And a pile up again in turn number three and four. Once more, another huge dilemma thrown their way. And I think Maxwell is all but done. A huge incident following in suit and on the track. There's just some things you just can't get around. Jeremy McKinnon here got inside that corner. The eight thought he had room, slammed into him there and got around the track. Sergeant getting into their breeding and then breeding, getting clipped up with Elsa and Ryan Dye just catching a horrible break there. Finds himself in the mess and in the pile up. And that, as they say, is all she wrote. And once again, Andy Palicki now, he's got his hands full. He's just running out of laps to get away from these guys. And these starts are not going to get any easier. He's going to need to start really tempoing those starts a little bit. And watch out in case that green-white checkered pops up for him. Running back with 20 laps to go off of the corner in turn four. Palicki will settle him down. Nineteen laps left. Anybody's race. Langston, great start this time. Manages to stick with him a little bit, but doesn't get it all the speed he wants. Kyle Spees, the old speed demon, is back out for him. He's looking for company. He's looking for some room. Rotella, twenty-one. Jeff Langston looking to try to hang on. Looking to try to keep up the momentum. Every driver for themselves. Langston. Oh my. Slung the rear end out and could have caused a lot more trouble than it was worth. Needs to keep that right rear intact and not out of line. Uh, something go wrong on our end? There we go. There we go. I was wondering what the heck happened. I was about to say, we have the file already up on here. I don't know what was going on there. Jeff Lanks in the Rotella 21 right now, currently moving up to the pains into the speeds of 36. Kyle Speeds just can't throw it around like a rag doll. And Langston in serious trouble. Speeds has no forgiveness and no chill about it. He wants that run. He wants the 32. But looking in a bit of trouble here. See so coming forth here more and more. We got 13 laps left to go. Now 12 here in just a minute. 
Keep in mind, folks, there was an iRacing update, so currently we may be struggling with that a little bit. Coming off the edges here once more. 12 now left to go. Speed's looking for Palicki. Palicki trying to hang in there. If Spees can hold on just a little bit longer, I think Flicky might have a problem on his hands. Spees, though, is starting to fade. You can see the 32 is getting a run, getting all she's worth on the bottom lane. The line to keep the truck under control while also trying to shorten the track down as much as he possibly can. Ten laps left to go, and it is now a make or break race. Nine to go. Look, you know, just seven laps remaining in this hard-fought, hard-headed, heated affair. Trying to hold on. Kyle Spees now starting to fade out further and further with six laps to go. This is not looking good here for the Speed Demon. Spees trying to hang in there. The 21, though, of Langston, if he can get to his back bumper, I guarantee you, we may see some sweet, sweet payback coming. Bees knows this. He's trying to stay away with five to go. Langston giving her everything she's got, trying to get up to him. But the damage may be done in all the right ways and all the wrong ways. Listen to the power of that 21, though. He is flooring that bad boy. He is not lifting. And neither is Spees, but they're still nowhere near the guy that leads the pack and the 32 of Andy Palicki. Palicki with three laps to go will signify for two. Green flag flying high in the air this next time on by for the 911 Nissan 32 Ford F-150. Spees has been caught up to. Here comes Langston. Strung into the bottom. Couldn't get him. Now back on the pack half. Looking for the speed. Langston looking to drive hard on the top. We'll come to the white flag this time on by for Andy Palicki. One more to go. Spee's trying to hang on. And Langston catches his corner. Got him on the back half. Straight in the back stretch. But off a of turn number three and four. Oh, wait. Spee's gets a hit there. And Andy Palicki will win it. But Spee's gets taken to the line. Oh, my. Oh my goodness, Andy Palicki gets away with it, but I don't think Spees and Langston had any thoughts about that. But to the end of it, Spees was able to hold on and take down Langston. But Andy Palicki will manage to get the 32 into victory lane after a completely wild, wild race. Oh my. Oh my folks, we're going to have to visit the instant replay there and take a look at that again. But Palicki will come away with another victory to his name and his reservoir. And it's a much needed one. Four wins to the season for him and his crew when he needed it most. But I think the biggest thing we want to see as well Besides the awesome burnouts that the 32 is popping up, is that as that end of the leg race between the 21 and the 36, we caught only a glimpse of it as we were shooting our cameras to try to get the race leader ending here. We'll see one more look. This was the final lap leading up to this one. Here's a look at it. 36 here, nearly gets clobbered there from the 21. Doc got him, waits for the moment. Comes to the back stretch, 
Flicky's got this 1-1. So Langston, the nudge, a bump and run. Langston backs off though. John K gets tapped. And a huge wall right off there. And I think actually John K. Yeah, it was a lap down. Just got completely taken apart there. Langston, I don't think, was trying to wreck him intentionally, but it looked unfortunately like a bit of the opposite. My boys are down there ready to talk with our top three drivers, so I'll let them finish it out from here. Boys, take it away. All right. It is recording whenever you are ready, sir. Uh, wild night here at the Bristol Motor Speedway, completing a 200-lap event. We will start with our third-place finisher, Jeff Langston. Uh, Jeff, another strong finish from you. Short track, how'd she feel out there tonight? <laughs> Honestly, I, I lucked into this one. Uh, in the middle of that long run, I'd hit the wall and burned up my right front tire and it just got lapped and just my plan was just to stay out and run it out and that caution came out and trapped about everybody but three people a lap down so <laughs> this was just dumb luck honestly but hey that's, that's how it works sometimes in racing yes sir hey sometimes better to be lucky than good congratulations on third uh we'll go to our p2 finisher rookie kyle speed led 28 laps looked good out front tonight uh how to feel overall Pretty good. Uh, just trying to figure out the setup as much as I can. I'm not really into trucks as much. This is my first year really diving deep, deep into it. Uh, this league's a blast to be a part of. Very clean racing. So me driving in here, getting adapted to the track itself. It was nice to do around you guys. Uh, like he said, once the three guys were on the lead lap, it was everyone's game in my opinion on how many costumes we had. Uh, I'm going to have to second what he said. Really just dumb luck tonight for me as well. I uh, I have no force feedback, so me going out there racing, I just fell into that spot and luckily saved enough tire to get second tonight. Yeah, definitely a gutsy finish with no force feedback. That's always tough. Good to see a good to see a newcomer up front and out front for as long as you were. Congratulations, Kyle. To our winner, Mr. Andy Politsky, leading 64 laps tonight, bringing home the W. Andy, congratulations. How did it all work out for you? Uh, it, it worked out really well. Um, I was uh, I didn't have the best truck. Brian was by far better than me. Um, he could roll the centers a lot better than me. Um, but uh, when I saw him pit, I uh, I just was going to gamble. I was going to run it till it, it uh, ran out of fuel. Whether it be before the race ended or not, I wasn't going to pit. Um, didn't think that uh, they were going to get back by me if I did that and just kind of got the caution at the right time. So, um, at that point I knew I had the truck to beat. So, you know, I just put it, uh, where I needed to and, and ran the uh, race I needed to at that point. So. Yes, sir. Uh, anybody like to thank tonight? Uh, thank my sponsors, Nissan, Wichita Falls. Uh, they've been on the truck all year. So glad to get them a fourth win. Um, I think I made up some points, so hopefully it makes it interesting going into Atlanta. Um, also, uh, all the uh, all the people that lost their lives uh, 21 years ago on 9-11 ran a special paint scheme for them. So glad to put this one in victory lane. Yes, sir. Uh, congratulations once again. Uh, join us next week for our season finale at the Atlanta Motor Speedway, old Atlanta Motor Speedway. So not flat out this time. Uh, Christian, I'll send it up back to you, bud. Hey, guys, thanks so much for your help there and all the help support from the Venom Truck Series. We love every one of you guys, and we thank everyone that tuned in tonight. Again, guys, remember we have one more race coming to you tonight as well as Friday, and then we'll be on hiatus until about Monday afternoon when we return, and it will be the original setup and how we usually sound, how we usually look, because I'll finally be back in headquarters Kate. Uh, Keo, as long as uh, nothing else happens, so I'm not knocking on wood, but should be fine and good to go then. But in the race fans, thank you so much for tuning in. From all of us here at Pete Race TV, we love and support you guys. We thank you so much. We'll see you next time with the green flag flies.